Okay, so let's get straight into it. This is the second video of the renovation um, of my bike. Brompton M6R Super Light folding bike. Um, here I'm just whipping off the uh, luggage block. Uh, I'm not going to go through every nut and bolt and every detail. There are lots of fantastic videos out on YouTube showing you how to do most, if not everything, that I'm going to be doing today. But I will just sort of highlight the process and any issues that I have along the way. And I do have a couple of issues um, that you may come across if you're doing any of these procedures yourself. Um, so, yeah, if that's of interest, stay with me. Um, the block here is basically one screw and a couple of bolts just to get that off there. Next it's the bolt catcher. Bolt catcher, sorry. Handlebar catcher. Just one little hex bolt. And she's out. Taking off the saddle, pretty straightforward procedures. Just one bolt to undo there on the pentaclip. And the only thing I would say on that is do be careful not to un and do it too much it's just enough basically to get the saddle off which will then enable you to take out the seat post um, if you undo it too much um, you've got a danger of the pentaclip coming apart and they can be quite fiddly to put back in so that's just one little thing to bear in mind there the seat post just drops straight out the bottom of the tube there nice and easy so our next job is just to uh, take off the easy wheels. I will be replacing the easy wheels um, with some new larger easy wheels as I'm fitting a, a new wider handlebar and um, that will enable the bike to fold properly without the handlebar striking the ground. Bigger easy wheels will lift the bike, the folded bike further off the ground. So I'm replacing them both at the front and the back. One thing to bear in mind, uh, this is a older version rack so the uh, easy wheels on the back have a five mil um, bolt as opposed to a six mil bolt on the frame and most of the easy wheels you can get these days are six mil to accommodate that newer rack next i'm going to be taking off the chain this is the chain wear indicator tool um, if that slots in the chain there that indicates that it is um, worn uh, to the point where you would need to replace it I'm replacing the front chain ring and the rear sprockets anyway. Um, so yeah, as a matter of course, I'd replace the chain, but that's just showing you there that that does need doing. Um, the chain, yeah, it has a quick link on the Brompton chain, so it's relatively easy to remove that. And particularly if you have the right tool there, it's not essential to have that tool. You can do it with a bit of cord or some long nose pliers, but um, the correct tool there just makes the job nice and easy so that's just whipping off the chain for you right so i'm not going to run through the full procedure of taking off the back wheel um, again if if that's not something that you're comfortable or familiar with there are some great videos out there on youtube showing you just how to do that um, take off the chain tensioner first um, obviously it, differs vary depending on the model of the Brompton you've got there, how many gears and the system you've got at the back. Um, but yeah, next job is just to take off the back wheel. And the last part of that job there is just to let some air out the tyre just to enable it to uh, slot through the back brakes. And off she comes. Okay, so here we're removing the cranks. Uh, now this is something where you will need the correct tool, a crank puller. And also I will say it took a real amount of force to, uh, to loosen the crank on the drive side here and uh, to get that off. Uh, so that's something just to bear in mind. Yeah, it took quite a lot of force in order to release that. So 
So nothing really wrong with the bottom bracket. This is a little bit notchy, as you can probably see here. But um, yeah, I'm changing it just for a lighter one. Now this is a job that's going to be much, much easier with the correct tool. Um, there are different bottom brackets fitted on the Bromptons depending on the age and the model of the bike you've got. Um, so the main thing is to check the number of notches on the, uh, the fix in there and make sure you've got the right tool for taking that off. Um, other than that, pretty straightforward. Right, so onto the front of the bike and the handlebars. Um, again, I'm not going to go into great detail on this. I do have a separate video on the channel uh, for removing the handlebars if uh, you need more information on that. I did have one issue with this. One of the bolts on the brake levers was rounded off. Um, this, just for uh, interest, was a titanium bolt that I fitted two or three years ago. So I may have over tightened it, I don't know, but that was rounded off and I cured that by um, cutting a slot in it there with the Dremel tool and a, a grinding disc to enable me to remove it with a flat bladed screwdriver. This area, the handlebar, uh, where, where the, the stem holds the handlebar, uh, has a little bit of an issue with the rust. You can see that on the bolt that I've removed. And just a little tip for removing the handlebars there, once you've taken that bolt out, if you put it back in the other way, thread it through, um, and against uh, a washer or something, so it doesn't go back through the hole, just, just turn it a turn or two against that. It will just open the, um, the stem up a little bit more there and just make it easier for you to get the handlebar out. Here's another area that's got a particular issue with the rust around the top of the uh, seat post stem there. Um, also with this, um, when I had a closer look to get into see where I could get in for the rust, I seen that the top of the seat post sleeve is broken. Um, so that's something else I may have to replace. Uh, I will avoid that if I can, but I may need to do that. Right, so removing the front stem. Uh, this is also problematical. Um, the, the wedge in there was really firmly stuck. The procedure is to sort of r rotate the bolt four times, which wasn't a problem. The bolt itself wasn't stuck. And then give it a tap with the hammer uh, to, to knock that down and release it. Um, it really didn't want to release. Um, spent some time and effort on that. Uh, in the end, what I did was to um, use some WD-40 down there, some penetrant to help uh, try and loosen it um, once I got in there I found it was well greased anyway that wasn't the issue you just couldn't get enough force with it in the frame so I dropped the bike onto the floor um, and hit it that way with some real good force and eventually got it to go uh, but yeah this caused a little bit of an issue and something you may need to be aware of it may not come out as simply as it would appear in some of the videos 
Right, so the last job then is just to take the headset off to release the front fork and that will free up all of the frame ready for painting next time round. Headset, um, pretty straightforward. Um, it's one where it's useful to have the right tools, although you can get away. Um, there are workarounds that aren't too difficult if you don't have the correct tools for this one. Didn't have any issues here, um, just removing that. So that's the last job on this section. The next video is gonna cover prepping and painting the bike. So a bit of full process of um, removing the rust where there is, prepping the frame, priming it and such, and repainting. Um, yeah, so that's gonna be the, the next video. And then the final video, we'll be putting it all back together with the new parts that I'm fitting. If you're not um, sure what new parts I'm fitting, then you need to just refer back to the first video of this, this series of renovating the bike. Um, yeah. So that's where we're at. Um, I'll just show you a, a close up now of, of this area once the fork's off there because this is one of the worst areas uh, on the bike and one of the biggest reasons why I'm doing what I'm doing and, and particularly the repainting part of the bike. Um, this is a handy tool and not expensive. Makes it really simple for removing those caps. Right, so there we go then. You can see the issues there quite clearly. Quite a bit of rust coming through there. So, yeah, I hope that's been useful for you. Hope to see you on the next video. Hit the subscribe and like button if you haven't already. And also hit the reminder. And be sure to see the next one repainting the frame thanks again for watching bye for now